I don't know if people know Aragon and have, have used it before, uh, so I thought, I thought I'd do a live demo of what it looks like today. So in the next 20 minutes, we're going to claim your DAO name on Aragon mainnet. You can actually do this yourself. You can follow and just um, pick your own name if you want. I'm going to do one for something called Lorikit, which is um, something I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek about. This is, uh, I guess, like a component um, toolkit and a design system that we've been working on for Aragon uh, specifically, but we are open sourcing it um, more broadly. I want uh, other people to be able to use it as well. So, really briefly, I uh, just wanted to introduce myself and my uh, collaborator and friend, Peer. Uh, so, my name is Yoni, and um, we've been working on a couple of different open source projects over the last few years. So, worked on Ubuntu, Ubuntu Phone Mobile for about four years, and then uh, recent redesign for Riot Matrix, and uh, most recently, I guess, last year or so, we've been working very hard on Aragon, trying to make organizations uh, on blockchain be very easy to use. So, yeah, let's get into it. Let's claim your DAO name. So, if, if you want to, to try and follow it, uh, you, can, you can do this yourself. It takes about two minutes. You'll get to issue your own token. You get to claim your name. So, it's pretty cool. It's right on. Uh, Let's go to the website. So for those of you who haven't seen or heard from Aragon before, Aragon is a, is a kind of a platform for DAOs, I guess. Um, so it's very, very, very uh, extensible, very broad. You can do a lot of things with it. But in this instance, I'm going to create a DAO for managing Lorikit, which is um, the design system. So in the future, we might want to be able to vote on different choices that we that participants in the open source project want to go ahead with. So uh, I think a DAO would be great, great uh, setup for that. So I'm going to do this on mainnet because we are live on mainnet as of this week um, after uh, quite a lot of hard work. And I'm going to create a new organization. So you can, you can open existing ones. If you're just trying this out, maybe try the demo org first to see how the app looks like. But I'm going to create a new one. So we'll create a new org. and. For this one, we want to have a, a democracy token project. We have a lot of people potentially on, on, uh, who, on this project who want to decide on things. And we're going to call it Lori Kit, which is great. Nobody has squatted it. Next, um, I'm going to just kind of breeze through. This is kind of the settings uh, for your um, voting that um, I'll just use the defaults for now, but you can change this. And I'll call it. So when you're creating a DA with Aragon today, you also get a token, ERC20 token. So I'm going to create, uh, what could we call it? Let's call it Lorikoin and give it a ticker. And then, yeah, um, you just confirm the transactions and get a cup of coffee, I guess. Um, and then you've got your DA ready. So. Um, to save some time, I'm just going to jump into a demo org to show you guys what happens next, what, what you get when, when you finish with the transactions. And it looks like something like this. So this is basically the Aragon main UI. So what you got here on the left is um, a list of apps you have in your organization. So by default, you get um, apps like token managers, manage your tokens to add people to your organization, voting, you can vote on various things. You can just do random votes on anything you want, or you can do uh, voting uh, relating to finance if you want to make any kind of transactions from your DAO to have to pass through voting first before they accept it, then that's a, that's a good use case. Um, actually, I'll show you really quickly how these work. So in this demo DAO, we have two token holders. You can just add more people uh, by just adding their, adding their Ethereum address and hopefully NS name pretty soon. Big fans of ENS. Uh, voting looks like this. So, um, yeah, you'll see what uh, the current votes are, what's been rejected, what's been approved. Uh, you can view the details of that vote. If there's an open vote, I don't think there's any on this demo dial. You can, you can vote on it if you hold tokens in the organization. Um, in the finance app, you hold um, 
different tokens on on your organization so you, you can do various things with it you can pay for things you know the normal stuff but all this stuff can be linked to the, the voting app so whenever you want to make decisions you can make sure that token holders approve those first so um yeah make a new transfer so i can make a deposit so if i wanted to deposit some ether in the, into this org i could just do it through here i can also send either directly but for different tokens it's better to do it through the app and you can if you want to withdraw let's say i wanted to pay for i don't know flights to Zug, uh, I just put in the, maybe there's an airline, airline that accepts Ethereum, I just put the, the contract address here and and then click this and depending how you got your permission set up, it goes th either goes through a vote or if your account has um, the per permissions to do these things directly, then you can also do that. We have an app store that's coming up, uh, which is going to be really cool, um, so people can create their own Aragon apps. Um, these are just some, some examples uh, for now, but hoping to have have lots of, and it's really quick to create this app as well. So hoping to have lots more in the future. So yeah, that's kind of a sneak peek of um, Aragon 0.6 Alba, and yeah, try it out. It's very quick to use, very easy on mainnet, so you can do real things now, which is cool. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys. Um, presentation is Loricate. So Loricate is something we've been thinking for a, about for a long time. Uh, I guess this started off as um, just kind of an extension of we built something for ourselves where we thought it would be really cool if we could just expand this thing to something that anybody can go with. People can contribute to it, and basically, it'll just enable you to create um, production-ready, beautiful apps much quicker because you have these good baseline components. Um, and really, you can use this for throwaway prototypes if you want. But you, these are—we're using all the components on Aragon itself, so these are production-ready. So you, it's, it's not really something that you have to worry about. Like, is it just good for a prototype, and I have to redo the whole thing once I go to prod? You can actually use this in production. We do. Um, we've been working on these components for probably about a year now. Uh, this um, quite a lot of pull requests, mostly thanks to uh, Pierre over there. And uh, we have 11 contributors now, but we're really hoping to to get more people um, building stuff on, on top of this and that's just kind of benefiting from the from the work we already done and uh, being part of the community. So this is a sneak peek. There is a website coming pretty soon, but uh, just to give you more of an idea of what we're hoping to achieve with this. So, first and foremost, and I guess this is where we are kind of right now on 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 on, on the project, is we have a very modular component library of React components. Um, we also have some uh, specific UX patterns and components to decentralized web. A lot of these components are pretty generic, like you'd imagine with a kind of React UI toolkit to find like buttons and cards and so on. But we also have some specific components to to blockchain, which I'm going to show you guys a few of those in a minute. And th these components are pretty um, performance. So we've done a lot of optimization for this. So especially on mobile, you'll see the difference. This should really feel like like um, native components. And then animations is one thing that uh, doesn't get used um, by a lot of projects because maybe it's a bit daunting or people don't really know what library to use or what to do. So we're hoping to help with that as well. We have some preset motion um, design done here and, and, and we're going to have a lot more kind of user guidance on that. It's easily extendable so you can build your own. Like you don't, If you don't find the component you need, you can just build your own and add it, add it to and hopefully submit a pull request for us to, to add it in. And we've tried to go for a kind of a clean Clean UI design, which you can you can use for your own app without every app looking like Aragon. Basically, uh, you can theme also theme these things pretty easily. So if you want to do something that looks very different, that's that's totally doable as well. And yeah, I want to highlight the fact that we really want to do this as, as a community effort um, because yeah, it's um, the whole ecosystem will benefit if we have good kind of baseline components. 
um, and we're hoping you're going to build Drupal your own. And it's not just for uh, developers, really. I, I'd love to see more designers getting involved. Um, so I, we're actually going to submit a bunch of um, bounties, uh, both for dev and design, pretty soon. So if there's any designers in, in the room as well who want to, who find this interesting and want to find out more and maybe work with us um, on these bounties, come and talk to me after the, after the talk, and I'll add you guys to the bounty list. And product people as well. Any, anybody, basically, who's interested in working on good experiences. So a couple of more things about the, um, the React uh, component specific. So I think I've gone through most of these already, but just to reiterate, these, these use styled components, uh, which is a way of styling a theme your React components. And they're very themable, so you can really go to town on changing the look, if you like. Uh, we're targeting 60 frames per second, uh, native feel and performance, so really want to optimize um, how well uh, the stuff performs. Um, we have a documentation sec section on, coming on the website, so you'll see like um, API docs um, to basically all these components. You'll also have like guidance on on um, principles for de de uh, designing for de decentralized systems, dealing with latency, informing users, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you a quick sneak peek of the of the dev docs. Um, we've got it on ui.aragon.org for now, but it will it'll be very soon moved to the lowercase site. So just wanted to give you, uh, oh, there we go, a quick look into what what this, um, what the documentation looks like. So you've got code examples here, how you use it. You have like, always when you have a code example, we have had, we'll have the rendered React component so you can mess around with it, just see how it performs. Um, you can scale it, you can see how um, most of these components, I think actually all of them are um, responsive now, so I'll show you in a little bit on a demo on mobile, but yeah, you can just see how everything works. Um, so yeah, um, the, we're really hoping to make this uh, documentation really thorough so people c can really easily start using this and yeah, they'll just You'll see, you can pick like, oh, I like this control, this is how I use it, and just, just go with it straight away. So yeah, you'll see that there's a bunch of the basic controls are already built. We'll probably need some more, so hence the bounties. Um, and if you have your own ideas, yeah, please get in touch with, go to GitHub, do a pull request if you, if you build anything, or, or just file an issue, we'll, we'll start from there. Uh, cool. So I want to talk a little bit more about mobile. I think mobile is super important. Like, uh, yeah, I was really curious to find, uh, like Beltram mentioned in the talk yesterday, that everyone kind of knows in the back of their mind that, yeah, actually, most of our users probably are, are using mobile as well, but uh, maybe have, haven't built for it yet. So I think this is, this is nice for you guys as well. If, if you use LowerKit, you get mobile pretty much straight out of the box because these components are, are responsive and really well optimized for mobile performance. So I'll just show a quick demo of what that, that looks like. Uh, so this is our voting app, and you can see like the desktop version, where you have each vote as a card, and we just stack them, and you'll see how like it just, we, yeah, we spend a lot of time trying to think what's the best user experience um, for mobile as well, going from like a wide screen to a small screen, just making sure that you can use all of this stuff for mobile too. And I think mobile is going to be re really important for blockchain in general. I think we need better mobile wallets and et cetera. But I think we're trying to do our part, so focusing on the components, um, making sure that they're really usable on mobile too, and the layouts. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about um, design guidelines and what we're hoping to achieve here. So we are actually, yeah, we're hoping to, we saw the talk yesterday, which was really great. Uh, we're hoping to collaborate with more more projects that are working on this type of uh, guidelines to just have a better documentation of what best practices are for designing, designing in general, and then also designing for, for Ethereum or, or decentralized systems. Um, so we'll have things like do's and don'ts on the website of what you should do, what you shouldn't do. 
I think material design guidelines are, are amazing. Um, so I think to have something like that, but more focused towards um, towards decentralized use cases. And yeah, obviously templates and tools as well. I think it's super important for designers who are jumping into the space to be able to to go in and download like um, source files for these things and stop messing around. And I think it just opens up so much more for contributions. So we have the components built in design in Sketch right now, but we have started um, porting some of this over to um, Figma and frameworks for like interactive versions of these. So this is one area we'd be super keen on. Uh, any designers in the crowd who are watching this, if if you'd like to kind of get involved in, in putting this stuff over to Figma Framework, get in touch. So, yeah, a couple of examples of the more blockchain, uh, sorry, um, blockchain specific components. Um, one big thing, obviously, is dealing with latency because uh, the transactions take a very long time to mine. Right now, even I think a year or two from now, they still take a while to mine. Um, so we need to somehow make sure that users are aware of what's going on. Um, they have, they can anticipate how, how long it's going to take, so they can they can do something else in the meanwhile, or you know they're not blocked on just waiting for things or wondering like what just happened and where did this thing go. I'll just show you a quick quick example. This is this is, um, our finance app. So. Um, just uh, skipping through, through a couple of bits of signing it uh, with MetaMask and stuff. But when you submit a transfer, for instance, we think it'd be really nice to like just show kind of an optimistic US state straight away of, okay, we know it's not signed yet, but we still want to show you where you are right now. So kind of show a pending state of, right, your uh, transactions being uh, mined right now. You can roughly see how long it'll take. We'll get from the gas price you sent, we'll, we'll be able to estimate a rough time. You can, you can, it will just save you time. Like you don't have to try and um, um, scrabble around for the contract trace. You can just see it directly in this scan as, as well if you like. Uh, and then once it's mined, and we'll just, whoops, we'll just add it to add it to the page, and and yeah, it'll it'll just update straight away. So. Trying to keep users in, in the DAP and then just keep them informed of pro progress all the time so that they don't have to kind of uh, switch around different apps, wonder what, what just happened and you know where we are, basically. And similarly to, to that, we just, we just think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things we could do for uh, helping uh, users feel more secure and more informed. So, so for instance, um, things like toasts so we, we could use for quick confirmations and notifications for more on-chain activity. So I'll show you an example of the Toast component that we, we're just building right now. Um, when you have uh, like quick interactions, you usually want to confirm to the user that, OK, what you just did has actually, you know, something's happened with it. Uh, so this is probably more, we could use this for on-chain stuff as well, but I think anything where you just need, need a quick uh, confirmation of, OK, we got it. Um, then we have something, I'll show you a quick video of um, like our transactions or notifications panel. So all the on-chain activities that you do would go to kind of a, a place where you can always see like this is, this is stuff I've been interacting with on-chain. I can see in one place, um, it'll notify me if the state of, of the transaction changes when, when they get man, mined, when they fail. So we have different states for failure, for instance. So it's very clear that you can always go to one place and just see what's been going on with your on-chain transactions. Uh, another thing we've been working on, I haven't uh, done too much work on it, but I think it's worth plugging. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's more of a developer thing, but um, human-readable transactions. So so right now, um, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you're all probably familiar with this kind of scenario where, where you have your MetaMask um, message and it, it just doesn't make sense. So we we propose this new um, thing called RADSpec where you can basically make the transactions human readable. So, and we, we're working with MetaMask right now, I think, uh, to get this implemented there. So right now this works in, in Aragon, we can basically tell the users uh, where they are with, so what the actions they're going to do are going to do uh, in, in plain English. Uh, I think this is, this is really gonna help. 
Another thing for uh, decentralized components is Ethereum addresses. They have kind of these really long, um, ugly strings right now. So we build this address badge component where you have like um, a clickable thing where we can show the whole address. We can show a smaller version of it, especially mobile. We'll, you'll see the see the uh, um, identifier, the blocky, and 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 then you'll just be able to click on it um, and copy this directly, um, which is a very common use case. We just thought we'd save you a couple of clicks there. See on either scan. Same with ENS names and so on. Uh, so yeah, another kind of blockchain specific component. Um, motion, we use this library called React Spring a lot. Um, so I'm running out of time, but basically, um, Motion, I think, is a really important thing of of, of user experience. Um, people don't use enough, uh, so we're hoping to help you with this. Should be quick and should be used for um, helping you uh, focus attention on certain things, not just for flash. Um, but yeah, I've I've got a quick uh, video of, of what this could look like. For instance, um, for transitions, I think it really helps to show the user where things are coming from, where you should focus on uh, your your, your Guys and so on. Uh, yeah, I think we're almost getting to the end. So, when can I use this? Um, we're hoping for an early Christmas, so late November ish, I think, depending on how busy Pierre is. Um, but yeah, it's nearly nearly done. Most of the components are ready to go. We just need to work a bit more on the website, and, uh, and we're good. So, yeah. Um, Last plug, if you're interested in Aragon or um, governance on the blockchain, you should come to Berlin in January. We have this amazing conference there called Aragon. You can go to Aragon.1 to find out more. And that's it. Thank you very much.